Africa, known for its iconic wildlife and breathtaking landscapes. But many of these natural treasures are under threat. In the face of habitat loss, poaching and climate change, private reserves in South Africa have emerged as a beacon of hope for conservation efforts around the world. These reserves are not only protecting biodiversity, but they're also enabling and contributing to global efforts in mitigating climate change, supporting sustainable tourism and promoting economic benefits for local communities. So conservation within the reserve is quite, quite large, actually. Um, there's constant, like almost yearly meetings of what else can be done. Um, there's a lot of uh, data collections for within the animals, do on the vegetation. Six to ninety centimeters that are ground here, and then for every ten centimeter segment, it depends on the temperature, the soil moisture content, and everything. So when we're downloading, we download the whole data, and then the ecologist downloads it, and then he does what he does with the data. It's just yeah, it's um, on different sections of the reserve different habitats, um, vegetation and geology, different soil types as well. You'll find it in moist areas and dry areas and then it kind of maps out the whole. Uh, we do animal surveys uh, by counting animals, by seeing their body condition, by um, seeing in which areas they roam, doing all their data collection. If you look at the data, uh, the animals that have been rescued, even if they have been rescued 15 years ago, they never really get uh, their condition back if they come from Sweetveld. And so even after 15 years, and it, it could be even that the, the calves of the, the rescue rhinos are not able to completely switch to uh, the natural diet. Uh, so that's why you continue uh, yeah. feeding them in winter. And, uh, so we want to understand that better. Right, so these are our camera traps that we do um, for our black rhinos. Mm -hmm. uh, so for the black rhinos, we don't see them that often. Um, so that's why we have the camera traps around for them. Um, we'll, uh, we do it mostly by middens so that uh, we know for sure that they will uh, come past. <laughs> Recently, we've had quite good success on uh, these camera traps. Um, we had most of our, this particular one has had almost all of the black rhinos recently on. Um, then we also get leopards, uh, we get civets on it, um, the buffalo like to walk past here as well. So yeah, it's, it's quite a successful uh, camera trap this one. <laughs> Private reserves in South Africa are also at the forefront of scientific research, studying the behavior and ecology of endangered species and sharing their findings with the global scientific community. By sharing knowledge and best practices, Private reserves are helping to inform conservation strategies and management practices in other parts of the world. I think we are starting to move into quite a good direction with um, conservation um, there's every day more and more things getting out there to actually do with conservation and there's a little bit more of everyone's involvement these days I feel like so on the one hand I feel like we are moving in quite a good direction with conservation and with um, reserves and countries actually like spreading out to get uh, conservation into the countries so yeah i think uh, we are in a in a good direction but then we are also in the another direction of is it working or not in some ways uh, we have the fence around so that makes intervention sometimes more than what uh, like a completely wild system would have been without fences or anything. Uh, you have these animals trapped here, kind of, in a way. And uh, we have to be very careful for that sometimes because now we have to manage them um, with that as well. 
while fences are often necessary to protect wildlife from poaching and other threats they can also have unintended consequences fences can disrupt natural migration patterns limit genetic diversity and prevent animals from accessing critical resources such as water and food fences can be a double edged sword when it comes to wildlife conservation but they also offer an exciting opportunity for conservationists and vets to collaborate towards a common objective with fences in place these professionals can leverage the benefits of controlled environments to deliver crucial medical attention that helps wildlife thrive Dr. Peter Caldwell uh, from Old Chapel Veterinary Clinic, a wildlife veterinarian, and we identified this is the last female that needs to be contracepted on Valkafonda. Uh, we darted her from the helicopter. She took about 10 minutes to go down and fall asleep, and then we just did a health check on her, and she's still under anesthetic now. We did a subcutaneous. Deslerin contraceptive implant, which is a GnRH analog. It down regulates the hormones. It takes about two weeks to kick in. Contraception can be either chemical or, or surgical contraception. I prefer surgical where we do a hemi-hysterectomy. We remove one side of the uterine horn. 27. And then they still conceive, but they have much less cubs, like two cubs instead of four. With a chemical contraceptive, many times I like to use that as a first line to start off with, and it's an easier but more management is involved. So therefore, you got to uh, to implant them, and it prevents them from breeding. And in a in a fenced reserve like this, even though it's a, a large reserve like 45,000 hectares, you got to control the population because they breed really well, and because they got such a high uh, amount of plains game and antelope. They are always kept very um, full and healthy and therefore they breed and overbreed and then they start decimating all the plains game and then the balance of carnivores to, to antelope becomes uh, skewed. So you have, to keep, you have to keep the lion population under control. The lions do breed very well and they have multiple cubs when they conceive. So it's basically controlling population and controlling genetics of it. We're just checking everything and making sure she's fine and we are going to wake her up with a reversal in about 5 or 10 minutes time. In the battle to protect wildlife, poaching is the enemy that refuses to be defeated. For private reserves in South Africa, it presents one of the most significant challenges to preserving the delicate balance of the ecosystem. Uh, the most poached animals are rhinos, pangolins, um, the, the elephants uh, with their tusks and uh, I think those ones are at the moment most probably the most. Um, you also get lions being poached for their claws, uh, for their skins, uh, leopards for their skins but definitely those top three are, are one of the biggest poached animals. Uh, around and some countries it's more than others uh, it depends on where you go if you will have uh, rhinos being more poached 
where you will have pangolins more poached or elephants more poached. It depends on the country you are in, where, where the most poaching is. But uh, I won't say that any place is like completely poaching free of anything. Um, you even get just normal game poaching for, for meat. A team of courageous individuals work tirelessly to protect the vulnerable animals from poachers. The anti-poaching squad put their lives on the line every day to safeguard and preserve the natural beauty and biodiversity of this world. There was an incident in December where five suspects um, poached three rhinos and uh, through excellent collaboration uh, within the community structures, these five suspects were arrested uh, about eight hours after they have committed the crime. Were the rhinos uh, poached? The, rhin the rhinos were poached and uh, the horns were removed. Uh, and like I said, through excellent collaboration within the community and the South African police services, they were able to be apprehended and arrested with, uh, with uh, the poaching equipment that was used. From confronting poaching threats to battling habitat loss, through sustainable practices, education and community engagement, game reserves are making a tangible impact on both local and global scales. Private reserves that have been set up that actually can contribute to conservation, especially when they tend to link up with one another. If you have whole ecos or whole, a whole bunch of these little reserves forming a uh, conservancy in particular, then fences dropped and then suddenly you have a big area that's now functioning like a big park, but it's a whole bunch of little private game reserves that have linked up and they can still have quite an important impact in conservation.